This time on ZTV Sports Report, we got women's soccer highlights as well as women's volleyball, men's soccer, and football. Stay tuned. Welcome back to another show of the ZTV Sports Report, your home for everything Akron Zips Athletics. I'm Tyler Gunter. And I'm John Alfieri. And Tyler, we have a lot of catching up to do since our last episode. Yes, we do, John. How about we start with the women's volleyball team? The women's volleyball team finished the Zips Invitational match, defeating both Youngstown State and Bucknell. The Zips then began their play in the MAC division, but it has been a rough start to their conference schedule. Junior Ashley Richardson was announced as the MAC East Offensive Player of the Week on Monday, September 17th, after her performance at the Zips Invitational match. In the Zips' three sets over Bucknell, Richardson had 15 kills, which tied her career high. She also held a season 4-1-6 hitting percentage, which ranked first in the MAC. On Friday, September 21st, Akron faced Miami for their first MAC division game. The team lost in three straight sets. On Saturday, September 22nd, the team hosted Bowling Green, hoping to gain their first conference win. With the game highlights, here is Ian Runninger. The 8-5 Akron Zips hosted the 8-7 Bowling Green Falcons on September 22nd in the university's own James A. Rhodes Arena. The Zips managed to take the Falcons to set five, with the Falcons winning the first set. The two teams were nearly one thousandths of a point away from each other in hit percentage, coming in at .181 and .180. Akron scored the first point of the first set, but started to fall behind when the Falcons took a 5-1 lead and ended up winning the first set. Both teams remained within a point of each other in the second set, until the Zips took a 5-0 run. She included kills from Adletta and Sheritz to take the lead and win set two. With the momentum coming off of set two, the Zips were ready for set three. The Zips took a 7-3 lead from a service by Adletta and kills from Gwadzd and Richardson. The Zips ended up winning the set 25-20, making their set record 2-1. The fourth set was tied 10 to 10 when Bowling Green took a 4-0 lead over the Zips. Akron was unable to recover from this deficit and lost the fourth set 25 to 19, forcing the Zips to a game five situation. The fifth set wasn't looking too good for the Zips, who were trailing eight to four, but kills from Adletta and Gwadzd brought them back within two points. Unfortunately, this wasn't enough and the Falcons held on to their lead and won the game 15-12. Akron travels to Kent State to face off against the Golden Flashes next week in their first meeting of the season. What a disappointing loss. Set 2 and 3 of that game, the Zips really seemed like they started to gain the momentum, but in set 4, Bowling Green was able to come back and take the momentum away. The Zips then traveled to Kent State and Ohio University, but unfortunately lost to both of those teams, leaving our team on a four-game losing streak. I had the opportunity to talk with the women's head volleyball coach Tom Hanna and senior captain Kayla Vuge about the Zips' season so far. Here's what they had to say. Welcome to the ZTV Sports Report, where today we have an exclusive interview with members of the volleyball team. I'm joined today by Kayla Vuge, a senior on the team here. Kayla, how are you today? I'm good. How are you? Good. I'm sure you guys just finished up practice here. It looked like you guys were going hard out there. And uh, tell me, what's it like, uh, the day in and day out practice life here for you guys? Um, well, we are a very process oriented team. Um, we just work on pushing each other and working through the ups and downs of everyday life. Now, this team, obviously, you guys had a very hot start to the season um, at, at this point in the season once the conference schedule started some things have you know kind of not gone your way the past couple games but they've been close but the end result hasn't gone in your favor what have you guys done on a team level to fix that um, on a team level we've just been trying to focus on more of the positives um, I guess one of our big things is focusing on communication and not taking any play off um, right now we're trying to focus on building our confidence and just playing every point like it's our last your unity as a team, it's obviously something that's needed to continue success going forward. How is your your bond, your unity as a team so far? Um, I think together we are 
very strong, we have very strong relationships and I don't think that's a problem at all for us. I think all the freshmen came in and we have a lot of different um, I don't know what I say, personalities that uh, come together really well. So. Now you're a senior, this is your, your last year on the team. Yeah. How does this team compare to teams in the years past? Um, in the past, I feel like this year we have a, a lot more fight and um, we push ourselves a lot more in practice. So uh, again, with the togetherness, I think we are have a lot stronger team relationship-wise. <laughs> All right, Kayla, thank you so much. Yep, no, thank you. I also had a chance to catch up with Coach Tom Hanna, who gave me his thoughts on the season so far. Well, it's been tough the last two weeks, uh, losing our, our first four conference matches, two of them in five sets, unfortunately. Um, we had a good start to the year in five set matches. We actually won our first three and unfortunately hit a little bit of rough ground here. But um, we're confident in our process. We're confident in our culture that we can find our way through this. Um, we, we're doing a, a bunch of good things, just not enough at the right points to kind of push us over the edge right now. And you mentioned that kind of rough spot in the season. Obviously, you guys have just started your conference schedule, lost the last four. What do you tell your team facing this adversity? How, how do you guys bounce back from something like The this? biggest thing we talked about after the OU match the other night was, hey, here's a list of things we've done really well. Here's a list of successes you've had in competition. Go right ahead. It's a body of work that you've built up this season we're the same group of people, we're doing the same things and hopefully we're getting better at them because things we were doing in week one, we've now had five or six more weeks of practice. We should be able to tune that and kind of like I said to them when we ended practice was ratchet things down and tighten it up just a little bit. So that's we're, we're looking at, hey, we've done some good things, we certainly can make that happen again. Now it seems to be the tougher games have come with the conference schedule. How do you compare these games against these MAC opponents to teams earlier in the season? I think the biggest thing is it's a stretch of four matches where it's been four really strong teams in a row. I think we've seen plenty of teams that are of the competition we see in the MAC, but over the first four weekends, maybe a little bit more sporadic, not back to back or three or four in a row when you look at you know one weekend into the next. And what do you tell your team, you know, in in the locker room when, when adversity really hits and things seem to be down in the season? How do you, you know, can say, hey, let's shake it off, let's continue on to the next game? It depends on the situation, and we've done a lot of work, obviously, on the court, but we've also done a lot of work the last few years building our culture and being able to figure out ways to either rebound when we're not having success, whether it's a match or it's, you know, how do we clear our mind on the last point and move forward? How do we hold each other accountable? So we're trying to fall back on our training, or as we say, rise to the level of our training. Again, whether it's on the court or it's things that have to do with mental training or accountability or leadership that we've had experiences that we can draw upon. Now this is, from what I understand, a younger team, a lot of freshmen coming in, um, and, but also you have a lot of senior leadership as well. Yeah. Um, how much how much of that success do you attribute to your seniors on this team? A lot. I think Kayla and Abby have done a good job as far as being leaders, really good leaders by example. They've been with us you know, for four years, so they understand how we conduct business, again, whether it's on the court or off the court. So there's a, there's a lot that they bring to the table. All right, Coach, thank you so much cool. for talking to us. Appreciate it. Thank you. The Zips return home on October 19th to square off against Central Michigan. Well, John, hopefully the volleyball team can turn things around sooner rather than later in their conference. It was interesting to hear what head coach Hannah and Kayla Bouge had to say. Let's move into the women's soccer team before taking our first break. The women's soccer team traveled to Western Michigan and Northern Illinois for their fourth and fifth straight games on the road. The Zips lost against Western Michigan 0-1, but won 3-2 against Northern Illinois. The Zips then returned home to play Eastern Michigan on Friday, September 28th, and we have the game highlights. The Akron Zips women's soccer team went into their matchup against the Eagles with a record of four wins, five losses, and one tie on the season. The Eagles record stood at six wins and five losses. However, both teams had a 1-1 record in the MAC before entering the match and were hoping to gain a game on each other in the conference standings. Eastern Michigan came out of the gates with a very strong first half performance. The Eagles started the game very physical, something that seemed to take the Zips by surprise at first before eventually fighting back. The Eagles got eight shots off in the first period, with three of those shots on goal. Akron goalie freshman Erin McKinney continued her strong first half of the season as she had two saves in the first period. The Akron Zips started the game slowly on offense and were only able to get four shots off before the intermission. 
When the second half started, the Zips came out looking like a completely different team. They were being equally as physical as Eastern Michigan and were able to get six shots off in the second period. In the 79th minute, number two, Angela Boyce kicked a rocket that narrowly missed a goal as it hit off of the post. This would have been Boyce's first goal of the season. Akron wasn't the only team that couldn't keep away from those pesky posts. In the 86th minute, Eastern Michigan's Sabrina McNeil fired off a shot that also hit off the post for a missed goal. McNeil would end up having seven shots on the day for the Eagles. This game really heated up in the final minutes of the second period, but at the end of regulation, the game was tied 0-0. In overtime, Angela Boyce of the Zips would record another two shots at the 94-minute mark and 95-minute mark both missing wide. Sabrina McNeil, however, from the Eagles was having a tremendous night, and finally after six missed shots, she made a shot in the 97th minute in overtime to win the game for Eastern Michigan. After the game, we were able to grab a quick word with head coach Noreen Hurley to hear her thoughts coming away from this tough loss. Well, I think the first 30 minutes, I thought we were well on top in the game, and then we allowed him, uh, uh, allowed him into it a little bit. But I thought we came out a little bit stronger at the beginning of the extra time. And um, unfortunately, you know, we just uh, didn't get it done on a defending a set piece. And at the end of the day, that's what we got to deal with. And we're just disappointed that we didn't get anything from the game. But we got to move on. We got to learn from it, and um, and we got to get better. The women's soccer team hosted Central Michigan on September 30th and lost zero to one. We're going to take our first break, but stay tuned for the latest men's soccer and football highlights. Welcome back. On Thursday, September 20th, the men's soccer team traveled to Phoenix, Arizona to play Grand Canyon, and we're looking to keep the momentum going after their huge 10-0 home victory over Canisius. David Egbo scored a goal in the fifth minute of the match, and that was all the team needed to defeat Grand Canyon 1-0. David Egbo earned National Team of the Week honors on Tuesday, September 25th. Egbo's game-winning goal at Grand Canyon was his seventh goal of the season, and his performance in this game helped him earn this honorable mention. Akron then traveled to Richmond, Virginia on September 26th to play VCU and won in overtime 4-3. Diego Pacheco scored a goal in the 94th minute to give Akron the win and also to earn his first career hat trick. This is the third hat trick for the men's soccer team this season. Akron returned home on October 1st to play Syracuse, who entered the night on a three-game losing streak. Here with the game highlights is Rob Jaginer. On Monday, October 1st, the University of Akron's men's soccer team squared off against the Syracuse Orange in a non-conference matchup. The Zips are returning home from a successful road trip and are looking to keep the momentum going. The match started with Syracuse putting pressure on the Zips' defense. This led to an early corner kick, which set up Syracuse's Led Zugner for a header that goes just wide of the goal. Shortly after, the Orange had another attempt from the corner, but Akron goalkeeper Ben Lunt was able to knock it away. Despite the constant offensive pressure, Akron's defense was able to hold off the Orange. The strong defense allowed the Zips to take over on offense. The Zips quickly turned the momentum on the Orange, pushing the ball into the box and putting heavy pressure on Syracuse's keeper, Hendrik Hilpert. Akron's Sky Harder is able to draw a foul from Syracuse's Hugo Del Hamel, setting up a free kick that would fly over the goal. Despite the miss, this sparked Akron's offense, taking multiple shots on goal and forcing Syracuse to play perfect defense. These attempts would be a major part of the 20 shot attempts taken by the Zips in the match. However, Syracuse is able to hold off the Zips offense and push back with their own. The Orange send the ball downfield on a quick counter. Sending the ball up to Tijan Buchanan, he finds enough clearance to take a shot, which Ben Loon makes an incredible save. But the rebound gives Jonathan Hagman a clear net, and the Orange go up one to nothing in the 28th minute. The goal ignited the Orange's offense, and they continued to put pressure on the Zips. With the first half coming to a close, the Zips picked up the tempo, pushing the ball upfield, trying to level the score. However, they would not be able to put the ball into the net, and the first half would end with Syracuse leading 1-0. Coming out of halftime, the Zips would immediately put pressure on the Orange, trying to find any hole in the defense. But the Orange would counter. Tijan Buchanan would put a header on goal, which was deflected by Ben Lunt but Jonathan Hagman would once again come up with the rebound, giving him his second goal of the night in the 51st minute. Feeling a sense of urgency would force Akron to play faster, but they couldn't get past Syracuse's defense. 
Jonathan Hagman would record a hat trick in the 65th minute after receiving a cross from Severin Sorley merely feet in front of the goal. In the 84th minute, Akron's Colin Byros would put the zips on the board, but the goal wouldn't be enough as the Orange would win the match 3 to 1. Diago Pacheco would assist on Byros' goal, and Ben Loot recorded three saves on the night. After the loss, head coach Jared Embick and freshman forward Colin Byros had this to say. We had a, I thought, good start to the game. and had a couple early chances and we didn't put them away. Uh, but we didn't respond to the goal. Uh, you can see them get confidence and uh, we had too many turnovers. We essentially gave up the same goal three times. Rebounds, beat to the ball for tap-ins. Um, you know, we had a setback back to who we were when we started the season, bad in transition, um, soft on the ball looking for other people to get our job done. And we didn't, uh, when it got down to it, and we got down 1-0, and we had to step it up. You know, those guys out-competed us, outplayed us. Um, and we have to, you know, continue to look at some of the same things and get better. And until we can do it consistently, we're going to be vulnerable to these results. I mean, today is just, I think, it was all about, because they were man-marking us all over the midfield. It's just about being confident in the ball. And, Going in there, winning your matchup. I mean, I knew my job was to go in there. I was trying to bring it back. I mean, I scored one goal, but it wasn't enough. We needed three, we only got one. But obviously not the result we wanted, but we just got to take it on the chin and move to the next game. We need to just be more confident on the ball, in my opinion. We're too tentative. We don't know. We didn't look like today we had an identity going forward. We just kind of hoped someone would do it for us. And we just, all of us need to trust each other more. We just need to be more confident on the ball because that's Akron style of play, it's just on the ball. The Zips are on the road for their next match as they open up conference play against the Bowling Green Falcons on Saturday, October 6th. On Tuesday, October 2nd, Diego Pacheco was named the MAC Men's Soccer Player of the Week. Pacheco was also selected by Top Drawer Soccer and College Soccer News to their Men's Soccer National Teams of the Week. On the season, Pacheco currently has five goals, which is the second most for the team. Moving along to football, the Akron Zips football team made history on Saturday, September 15th against Northwestern. This was the first game in program FBS history that the team defeated a Big Ten opponent. In the third quarter alone, the Zips had 213 yards of offense. And with 8 minutes and 23 seconds of the game remaining, Akron gained their 32-28 lead and held on to win the game by a final score of 39-34. The Zips, however, lost to Iowa State the next weekend, falling 13-26. Our Zips football team then returned home to play Miami for their homecoming game. Here with the highlights is Colin Brennan. It was homecoming weekend for the University of Akron as the Zips went retro with the 1976 logo on the helmets to open up some action against the Miami Redhawks. The Zips came out looking to move the ball as Cato Nelson finds Van Edwards to pick up a first down. Continuing the up-tempo, Edwards continues to bully defenders as he has all season, breaking first contact and getting into the secondary. But a miscommunication with Quadarius Smith and Cato on the handoff led to a fumble and recovery for Miami. In the second quarter, Miami found their rhythm moving the ball down the field and on three straight third down plays, managed to find a way to gain the yards they needed and ended the drive with a touchdown by running back Alonzo Smith. The Zips looked to answer, but seemed out of sync with the running game being stuffed and Cato missing an open receiver, which left the Zips searching for answers. Miami once again moved down the field at will, with Smith leading with an impressive catch and run into Zips territory. Miami found themselves within the 10-yard line and threw a quick out route to Kenny Young for another Miami touchdown. The Zips needed a play, and they got one with Quadarius Smith showing off his speed and elusiveness, dodging defenders and getting to Miami's 35-yard line. Cato decided to do it with his feet this time as he felt the pressure and found the lane to take it off to the 15-yard line. Two plays later, and Cato finds Nate Stewart, who inches his arm over the goal line for the Zips' first score of the game. The defense stepped up and forced the Redhawks to punt and was fielded by Andre Williams, who receives a huge block by Alvin Davis to spring free as he cuts backfield to the open grass. With nobody able to catch him down the sidelines, Williams finds his way into the end zone. However, this play would be called back by a targeting call that left Alvin Davis unable to continue and disqualified, and it seemed to affect the Zips as they stalled out on three straight downs. 
forced to punt, the Zips gave the ball back to Miami, but somehow the ball was knocked free into the hands of defensive star Ulysses Gilbert, who took the ball 46 yards for the touchdown and gave Akron its first lead of the game at 17-14. In the third quarter, Miami benefited off a questionable defensive pass interference call that put them in good field position for Kenny Young to run the ball in for the touchdown. This was the beginning of the end as the Zips turned the ball over on three straight possessions to which Miami capitalized for scores. In a play that perfectly sums up the afternoon, running back Davion Johnson fumbles the ball into the end zone only to have offensive lineman Jordan Riggs scoop it up for the score. The Zips lose 41-17 and look to bounce back on the road against Mac leading Buffalo. Let's take our final break of the show. When we return, we'll give our thoughts on the upcoming men's soccer match against West Virginia on October 13th. Welcome back to the ZTV Sports Report. Well, John, with the upcoming men's soccer match against West Virginia, what's your predictions? Well, Akron this year has definitely struggled at home, but see, last year they didn't struggle at home. At Cub Cadet Field, they played very strong against opponents, especially outside of their conference, and even beat number one Michigan State last year. So I expect West Virginia to come in and give Akron a good game. You know, a player who's really creating a huge impact for the Zip soccer team, we talked about him earlier in this episode, is Diego Pacheco. He's only played in a handful of games for the Zip soccer team so far, but he has scored five goals and assisted on another. You know, Pacheco and sophomore David Egbo are keeping the wins coming for the Akron Zips men's soccer team. You're absolutely right, Tyler, and something I want to focus on is West Virginia. They haven't played a lot of high-quality teams yet this season with their biggest win coming against Cincinnati. More than likely, Akron will be their toughest test yet. A player to keep your eye on, though, is the Mountaineers' sophomore goalkeeper, Steven Tekeski, who has only let nine goals in through 11 games. The Mountaineers are, are for sure going to give the Zips a solid test on October 13th. Well, that's all we have for now. Make sure to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube at ZTV Sports Report for all of your Akron actions. Until next time, go, go Zips! Zips. This program was produced by ZTV at the University of Akron. To find out how you can make Emmy-winning media, visit the UA School of Communication online. ZTV. Make media. Make a difference.